Grace and peace to you, beloved. Amy Wilson Feltz here coming to you live from the dining room of our parsonage, the parsonage of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. I am here with my family, and in just a couple of minutes, we will begin our observance of Maundy Thursday. So I am so glad that you are with us tonight, and I invite you to let us know that you're here so that we can say hello to you. I hope that you are gathering elements. You can certainly participate in this Maundy Thursday observance without the elements, but if you have them available, I invite you to get a bowl of water and some towels. For the first part of our reflection together, we will also observe Holy Communion. You may hear Olivia off screen. So if you have elements for Holy Communion, gather them as well. And then we've also prepared a simple meal. We have uh, Mediterranean inspired dish here uh, with chicken and couscous and some vegetables and so if you have those items water communion elements and uh, a meal we will be ready to start in just a moment but once again you are welcome to participate in this reflection without those elements as well I hope you have your materials before you but even if you don't you can grab a Bible and get ready to listen and to pray and to reflect as we move through the experiences of Jesus and his friends in the upper room on the night that he was arrested before his crucifixion. So once again, thank you for being here today. I see Yvonne. Thank you, Yvonne. We're glad that you are here. If you want to let me know that you're here, I would be glad to greet you. And as we prepare for the service, I invite you to take a deep breath. Let us pray. Remember me. These words call for our attention. Remember me. Think about me. Care about me. Don't forget me. Let me know that my life has meaning. God also says remember me. Remember the Passover when God spared the faithful, huddled behind blood-stained doors. Remember that God hears our cries and pities every groan. Remember that Jesus led us by serving others, even if it meant washing dirty feet. Remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus gave thanks, broke bread, and said, Eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And he poured a cup, a new covenant paid with his blood. He said, drink it in remembrance of me. We come tonight to remember. Remember what God has done, what God is doing, and what God promises to do. Tonight we set aside sacred time to remember God too, and to ask God to remember us. Let us pray. Amen. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Kathy and Leonard, or good evening, I should say. Good evening, Kathy and Leonard and Carolyn and Misha and Jen and your family. We're so glad that you are here. Our first scripture of the evening comes from John chapter 13, verses 2 through 8 and 12 through 15. So I invite you to turn to your Bible or to close your eyes and listen as we read. Hear now the word of God from John chapter 13. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around himself. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. 
Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table and asked them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also must wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So I hope that you do have a bowl of water, or water that you can pour into a bowl as I have done. I invite you to pour the water if you have not yet already, and to let it fall through your fingers. And to think about the ways that Jesus has served you in your life, the way you have been served by others through the name of Jesus, the way that Jesus calls us to serve one another. And I invite you to wash your hands in the water and to dry them with a clean towel. You can do this if you are in your house by yourself. You can do this with your family as well. You can just let the water again fall through your fingers. It's okay if it's messy. Remember what Jesus has done for us and now we are called to serve in Jesus' name. And then dry your hands with the towel. And I'm going to be able to wash the hands of my family members as well. And so as I do that, I invite you to continue to reflect upon the service that Jesus invites us to engage in in the world. Natalie, would you like to come first? So we have Natalie here. And you know, the other day, you can give me a hand, sweetie. The other day, Natalie and Augie were learning the story of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples and I invited them to wash each other's feet as well and then they did the sweetest thing. Do you remember? You asked me if you could wash my feet. It was so precious. And so we, today, tonight, we remember that we are called to serve one another. And you can take this towel. Good job. Yes. Okay, Augie, your turn. So now I'm going to wash Augie's hands. It's such a privilege to be able to wash the hands of my family members. Is it wet? Okay. And Jesus said we have to serve one another okay. if we're going to follow Jesus, right? Enjoy your hands. And now Jason and Olivia are going to participate as well. Hi, Olivia. Yeah, she's clapping her hands. She liked it when we poured the water. Can you get your hands in the water? Or if we use the towel in just a minute. Want to touch? Jesus, the water. Jesus loves us and serves us and calls us to serve each other. Wow, that's good. Yeah, you can touch the water. Thank you. What a joy it is to serve one another and to remember that Jesus calls us to serve. And it's messy. It's messy sometimes, and it's supposed to be. And we know that God's grace is at work in these moments. So consider the ways that we can be refreshed and encouraged on even the most weary and dreary days of our journey, knowing that God sets the example for us. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may your example of service remain ever before us as your spirit empowers us to serve others. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, good evening. If you are just joining us tonight, we are so glad that you are here. Linda, Gordon, thank you for participating. Barb and Jose, so glad that you are here tonight. Esther, good evening. Susan, Dick, so glad that you are with us. We are continuing in our meditation, and now we turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 through 29. So I invite you to turn in your Bibles if you have those with you, or you can close your eyes and listen as I read. Again, hear now the Word of God 
from Matthew 26, 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup. He took the cup and after giving thanks for it, he gave it to them and he said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So I invite you to gather your elements for Holy Communion. Perhaps you picked them up at the church earlier in the week. Perhaps you have gathered them in another way. And I invite you to share in this Holy Meal. Again, you can do this if you are at home by yourself. You can share the meal with your family as well. I'm going to share the meal with my family in just a moment. Augie, Natalie, would you like to come take communion? This is bread, actually, that the children and I made together last week as part of our Lenten Story Stones project. And so we are going to partake of it tonight. Here they come. So I invite you now. To remember that these ordinary elements that God gives us, they point us to our common humanity and the fact that we need nourishment every day and that God provides us that nourishment. And in the description of Jesus sharing in the meal with his friends, we are reminded of God's forgiveness. It's placed front and center for us. And so as we touch and taste these gifts, we can remember that not one of us needs God's grace any more or any less. So I invite you now to take your elements and partake of this holy meal. Natalie? Natalie, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Yes. Augie, the body of Christ broken for me, and the blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. And now Olivia and Jason will join us. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. Hi, baby. Yeah, and this is the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Yes. Just the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And I will join you in an observance of the Holy Meal as well. Thanks be to God for God's grace as it nourishes our soul. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may your invitation to and provision of this holy meal in the name of Jesus bring nourishment to the depths of our souls as we recognize our part in the body of Christ. Now we will conclude our service with a final scripture reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 39 through 42. That's Acts chapter 2 verses 39 through 42. John, we're glad that you have joined us. Casey, we're glad that you are here. Wendy, Robbie, Wendell, thank you so much for participating in this service. 
I invite you now to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and he exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to prayers. This is the word of God for the people of God, and so we say thanks be to God. So we are considering now the words of the Apostle Peter in the days of the early church, and they describe the faithfulness of God, the nature of our life of faith, our need for grace and community and ritual. So I invite you now to consider as you prepare to enjoy your next meal, whether that is in just a few moments as it will be for me, or whether it will be tomorrow, I invite you to consider the commonality that we share with all of humanity and our need for that daily nourishment. Consider the ways that our observance of this holy day, Maundy Thursday, connects us with each other and with followers of Jesus around the world. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this food and for all of the work that went into growing and preparing it so that it could be placed before us today. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may the nutrients of this meal strengthen our bodies and your presence with us strengthen our souls as our eyes remain focused on Jesus and the journey to the cross. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And certainly, John, we will continue to pray for you and the fall that you just took. We will pray for your healing. Glad that your surgery went very well. And we will continue to lift each other in prayer and to meditate upon our life together as we move into the rest of Holy Week. I do want to remind you that we have a couple of different ways to observe Good Friday tomorrow, we will have a come and go Stations of the Cross service outside in the courtyard from 11 to 3 at 7000 Edgemere. You are so welcome to participate in that way. If you are looking for a more formal service, we will participate in the Stations of the Cross in the service in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. That will be in person, but also it will be live streamed as well on our Facebook page and on YouTube. So I invite you to consider taking that journey with Jesus to the cross. And then of course on Easter Sunday, we will worship during two services. 7 a.m. will be a sunrise service, again in the courtyard at 7000 Edgemere. And then at 10.30 in the sanctuary, in person and online, and you're invited to participate as we proclaim the hope that we have in the resurrection. But for now, because we are not there yet, there yet, for now we will continue to meditate on the journey to the cross as we trust that God is faithful to God's promises. Thank you again for participating tonight. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the ways that we can connect with you and with each other. We thank you for these tactile ways that we can remember your grace. We can touch and taste and meditate on your faithfulness, your faithfulness in the life of Jesus and your faithfulness in the life of our community as well. May we take these moments seriously and allow them to shape us and to form us as your grace continues to work in our lives and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for your time. I look forward to seeing you one way or another tomorrow for our Good Friday observances. Grace and peace.